Well, everybody, in a crazy change of events, Apple did something that they usually never do. They listened to the end user. iPadOS 26.1 Beta 4 gives us a new option that I didn't think Apple would give us. So without further ado, let's talk about what's new and what's changed with iPadOS 26.1 Beta 4. Let's get into it. But now, before we continue, if you do enjoy videos like this one, where we keep you updated on all things Apple software, definitely consider subscribing to the channel and also consider becoming a channel member to get some of the awesome wallpapers that we showcase throughout the video. But let's get into the first change, which is going to be an epic one. Well, all right, everyone, let's break this down and see exactly how big the update was. Now, again, we're on iPadOS 26.1 developer beta 4, and this is about 13 gigabytes in size in order to get this installed and installed correctly. So give yourself maybe 25 gigs of open storage to make sure this does install correctly and make sure that you have no issues. And then in terms of the build number itself, if you go into our settings, if we go into our general, into our about, then click on the iPadOS version, you can see that we're on 26.123B5073 lowercase a. So what that essentially means is that we will be getting the RC edition more than likely next week, the release candidate. And then after that, we will be getting the final public release two weeks from today. So everybody can try out all the new different changes that are happening with iPadOS 26.1. But now there's one major change here that happened with 26.1 developer beta 4. And that's going to be that and that's that Apple's letting us play with the liquid glass levels when it comes to all the UI elements. When Apple first went with liquid glass with 26.0, the original beta, they went back and forth on how opaque they wanted it, how glassiness they wanted it in terms of all the UI elements. But if we go down to where it says display and brightness, we have a new toggle here called liquid glass, as you can see. You tap into that and you now have two options. You have the clear version and the tinted version. You can see that there is a representation up here to allow you to see what's going on and what it's going to look like moving forward. So you can see that it says choose your preferred look for liquid glass. Clear is more transparent, revealing the content beneath. Tinted increases the opacity and adds more contrast. So again, if we click on the clear, you can see that we can see a little bit more behind what's going on there versus if we click on the tinted, you can see that it's more opaque while there still are some UI elements behind it that you cannot see nearly as well as you could before. So I thought the best way to show this off is to actually see the UI elements change in real time and how that affects your experience throughout the operating system. So here you can see that if I go back into my settings, we should be on the clear version. That's the one that I personally prefer. So if we go into my photos application, this kind of shows off the best way from a UI element what it's going to change. So you can see that we have our toggles down here, the years, the months, the all that we had before. If I go like this, you can see that the iPads and the pictures behind it are pretty visible when it comes to the UI elements down here. As I kind of move around, you can see that a little bit more goes behind it. And you can see that like the red of the home screen over here is actually behind it. Now, if I get out of here, we go back into our settings, go into the tinted version. You can see that first off, everything is changing over here. So tinted, you can see that there are some elements that are changing here. Let's go back to the photos application. It is more tinted and you see far less. As you can see, you probably can't even see much of anything down there. You can see a little bit of it, but overall it is much less clear. And again, that makes sense because we're going from clear to tinted. Now I personally prefer the clear version. I don't know why, it just makes it look a little bit more kind of premium from an operating system and software perspective, but it's all gonna be preference at the end of the day. And that's the main change that's happening with the beta 4 update. It's all about this new liquid glass redesign and the ability to kind of go back and forth with your liquid glassiness, which is something I didn't think Apple would give us. Now, I do wish that it was more of a slider versus a toggle, and I do wish we can kind of maybe go all the way over and to, to the right and left to determine how glassy we want it, but at least we do have an option for the first time to determine how much liquid glassiness we want on our iPads and our iPhones and, of course, our Macs. But there are some other UI elements that I wanted to kind of showcase that still kind of keeps the glassy look even though we're in tinted mode. So if I go back into my settings, go over here, you can see that we are in tinted mode, right? And if I go back into the App Store, for instance, you can see that they are, it is more opaque. Again, you can see you can see far less behind it, but when you do go over it and you hold it down, you still get the liquid glass kind of magnifier effect as you can see here. So that's not gonna be kind of less liquid glassiness. No matter what situation you're in, it's gonna be the same level of clearness overall. But outside of that, it does kind of make everything else more opaque. But that's pretty much the biggest update here. We did get some other updates in beta three, which I did want to kind of call out here, which is basically bigger explainers for each one of the sections over here. So accessibility, all the different Apple Pencil stuff, or maybe even Control Center. You can just get more explainers in all the settings menus. But the last thing I do want to check out is going to be battery life. Battery life has been a little bit hit or miss depending on how you use it throughout the day. Again, I'm not great when it comes to battery preservation overall. But if we go on a day like view battery usage, 
go on a day like Monday over here. You can see we used 88% of the battery, only got four hours and 33 minutes of screen on time. Here we use 79%, we got about four hours of screen on time, so it's not the best battery life, but I am using some very task intensive tasks, right? I'm using LumaFusion, I'm using the Monitor Plus app to kind of coordinate everything from a video perspective. I'm in Safari, I'm in the files, I'm transferring a lot of data. USB-C accessories are always on here. So again, it's kind of easy to maybe just jump to the conclusion that I'm not getting a ton of battery life on my iPad. I probably get around six to seven hours on a good day if I'm using it very intensely and closer to eight, nine, 10 hours if I'm just kind of watching videos in Safari and in YouTube. But that's the biggest change, the new liquid glass toggle. Let me know in the comment down below what you think. Let's finish up the video. So that was just about do for this video, everybody. As you saw, aside from that one big major change that changes everything visually, nothing really changed outside of that for the beta 4 update. Again, we're now on beta 4 and we saw that we're on the A ending moniker, meaning that the RC one should be coming out next week. And then finally, in two weeks, the official public release should be coming out of 26.1 for your iOS, iPadOS, and macOS devices for you guys to kind of play with and try out to see if it's worth updating. But let me know in the comment down below. Are you guys in the beta program? Did you guys update the 26.1 beta 4? Are you glad that Apple gave us that liquid glass toggle now to be able to change it? I do wish it was a slider of sorts, but hey, beggars can't be choosers at this point. But that'll do it, everybody. If you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin. And if you guys want to watch more videos like this one, especially stay tuned for all the M5 iPad Pro stuff that's coming out later this week. Really excited for that one. But if you guys want to watch videos like that, click on one of these right here. Until next time, I'm Fernando. Peace, everyone.